When we think of Stephen King, we often remember The Shining, Stand By Me, Shawshank Redemption, these Hollywood movie adaptions of the author's more well-known works. The writer has published 61 novels and written over 200 short stories, most of which can still be found in press today. A man whose career highly focuses on the genre of horror, it's easy enough to understand that a lot of his work is understood to be somewhat grim. However, there's very few that have had such a negative effect on society and portrayed such gruesome realistic events that have been permanently pulled from publishing forever. At the start of Stephen King's career, the done thing was for a publishing author to be kept to the release of one book a year. Stephen King, however, a notorious workaholic, sought a way to bypass this tradition. He decided a way to release a large amount of publications without oversaturating the market under the Stephen King name was to create a pseudonym pen name called Richard Bachman. He also stated of this time writing under the Richard Bachman pen name, this was a perfect chance to try and answer the question of whether his success came down to luck or talent, releasing the books of as little marketing presence as possible. However, he felt he never quite got the answer he sought after as Bachman was outed as being Stephen King too early in his career. The book I want to talk about is the first book released under the Richard Bachman pseudonym, titled simply as Rage. In fact, it was the first novel Stephen King had written, as he'd done it in 1965, but it wasn't released. It was, however, released in 1977. It is a psychological thriller novel that describes a school shooting. Charlie Decker, the focal character, is brought into the principal's office about a past event in which he struck a chemistry teacher with a pipe wrench. The meeting ends in the expulsion of Charlie from the school. However, on the way out, Charlie retrieves a pistol from his locker, sets his locker on fire, returns to his classroom where he shoots his teacher and the fire alarm goes off. As everyone leaves the school, Charlie keeps his classroom as hostage. Charlie reveals to the class that he doesn't know why he's doing what he is doing and tells them he will probably regret it once it's over. As the book continues, it becomes apparent that the class identify with the troubles Charlie has been facing with life and the class turns into this psychotherapy group where everybody discusses their experiences in life and admits their secrets. It becomes apparent that only one character, the straight-laced all-American boy Ted Jones, is the only person in the classroom who is actually being held captive. Everyone else there wants to stay. One student even leaves at one point to go to the toilet and returns. The book is based on a very controversial topic and is an exploration of the mind of a troubled teen. And if there's one thing we've learned about books that explore the mind of troubled teens, it's that it can largely influence the actions of others. The problem with the novel Rage is that the actions in the book started to resemble actual events that transpired after its release. Jeffrey Lynn Cox, a senior high school student, took an assault rifle into school on April of 1988 and held a humanities class of 60 students hostage for over 30 minutes. Cox held the gun to one student but never harmed anyone. He was later tackled and disarmed by another student. A friend of Cox's had told the press afterwards that he had been inspired by the Kuwait Airways flight 422 hijacking and by the novel Rage, stating that he had read it over and over again and he strongly identified with it. Dustin L. Pierce, a senior at Jackson Country High School, armed himself and took a history classroom hostage in a nine-hour standoff with the police in the September of 1989. This also ended without injury. However, after the incident, a copy of Rage was found among the possessions in Pierce's bedroom. In January 1993, Scott Pennington, a Kentucky high school student, took a 38 calibre revolver owned by his father and shot his English teacher, Deanna McDavid. He then shot the school's custodian, Marvin Hicks, and then held the English class hostage for 20 minutes before releasing them. Just before this event, he had written an essay on Rage and was upset with the C grade Deanna McDavid had given him for it. Then, in the December of 1997, Michael Carniel shot eight students at a prayer meeting at Heath High School in West Paducah, Kentucky. He had a copy of Rage in his locker. Because of this incident, Stephen King let the book fall out of publishment, seeing it as the final straw. The book, however, was still available, but only part of the Bachman books, an anthology of the stories released under the pen name. However, if you were to buy the Bachman books today, any new editions excludes the novel Rage from it. In a footnote for the 2007 released Richard Bachman novel Blaze, a story that Stephen King had claimed he found in an attic and its actual date of writing 
predated Carry, his first published novel, Stephen King wrote of Rage, now out of print, and a good thing. King stated in 1999 that the Carniel incident was enough for me. I asked my publisher to take the damn thing out of print. They concurred. He'd go on to state his view on the subject, which acknowledged the type of influence a story like Rage can have on influencing an individual, particularly youth deemed trouble. However, he also stated that writers should not be denied the aesthetic opportunity to draw from their own culture, which is abundant with violence. King would go on to state the inspiration for Rage would have came from his own frustrations as a high school student. In an article where King was discussing the ominous writings of the Virginia Tech shooter for Entertainment Weekly, King spoke of his book Rage once again, stating, Certainly, in the sensitised day and age, my own college writing, including a short story called Cain Rose Up and the novel Rage, would have raised red flags, and I'm certain somebody would have tabbed me as mentally ill because of them. In 2012, Stephen King published an essay simply called Guns, that describes all his reasons for allowing the book to slip from the public sphere. I'll leave a link to a PDF in the description for anyone who's interested. But to finish off this video, I'll simply read the closing statement from the essay. I had friends in high school, including a girlfriend who stood up for me when I needed standing up for, God bless her, and I possessed a certain sophomoric wit that gained me respect. Also a few detentions, which were a very acceptable trade-off. Those things got me through. Even so, I couldn't wait to put high school behind me and meet people who did not consider giving wedgies to losers a valid part of social interaction. If that was how it was for me, a more or less regular dude, how would it be for kids like Jeff Cox, Dustin Pierce, Barry Lucatus, or Michael Carniel? Is it really so surprising that they would find a soul brother in the fictional Charlie Decker? But that doesn't mean we excuse them or give them blueprints to express their hate and fear. Charlie had to go. He was dangerous and in more ways than one.